Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to discuss genetic linkage. So up until this point, we talked about Mendelian genetics and how genes are sitting on separate chromosomes and how these chromosomes are sorted independently. So we explore the different combinations that we can get as a result. But now we're going to see that sometimes we actually do not get the expected ratios, that those genes do not sort independently. And why? Because they are linked. In other words, they are sitting on the same chromosome chromosome and oftentimes very close to one another, therefore they get to be inherited together. Okay, so let's see what we would get if genes sat on separate chromosomes, on different chromosomes, and those chromosomes are sorted independently. So what ratios, what outcomes would we expect? So we are going to perform a test cross. So this is where we take a heterozygous organism, and in this case this is going to be uh, a fruit fly, and cross it with homozygous recessive fruit fly. So I'm going to assign the following symbols. So this is a gray body and normal wings. So gray body and normal wings symbols here, and then black vestigial is going to be little a, little a little b, little b. So remember this is a test cross. This is why we must always cross the organism to uh, with homozygous recessive. So let's see if this pattern follows Mendelian genetics we're supposed to get a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. How do we get that? So let's quickly do it over here. So if we cross heterozygous for both traits with homozygous recessive we're going to get the following gamete combinations from this parent and now only one type from this parent and if we cross them fuse the gametes we're going to get these genotypes so what we get here is equal proportions of each genotype and phenotype. So we have 25% of this, 25% of this genotype, and this. This is basically 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So now what we can see in our cross, when we actually cross these flies, we do not get a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 because you can see the number of individuals that resulted from this cross is very different. We have a lot of gray normal, this genotype would be big A, little a, big B, little b, just like the parent. And then we also have larger numbers of black vestigial. So this is exactly what we get, just like the other parent. So we're going to call it parental type. And then we get two types of recombinations here. So notice gray vestigial is going to be big A, little a, vestigial, little b, little b, and then black normal, going to be little a, little a, big B, little b. So you can see these numbers are actually much lower. So we have fewer recombinants compared to the parental type. So this is definitely not a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one ratio. So this indicates linkage. The genes for the body color and the wing size are going to be sitting on the same chromosome. So now we can actually calculate recombination frequency percent and see how far these two genes are sitting from one another on the same chromosome. So what we do, we have to add recombinants. We have 55 and 65 and a total of 400 offspring here. And then we're going to get 0.3 frequency, and if we multiply that by 100, we'll get 30% recombination. So now, if you drop the percent sign and replace that with map units, it's basically your distance that you're going to see between the two genes. So this would be my chromosome. I'm going to say this is my gene A. Remember, we have two versions of that gene. And then we also have gene B, so this would be the wings, two versions of it. And the distance between the two genes would be 30 map units. 
So the greater the distance, usually the greater the recombination frequency. This is why by calculating recombination frequency, we can actually determine the distance between the two genes. And then if we have more genes involved, we can actually build a chromosomal maps and figure out the order these genes occur on the chromosome. So now, um, this diagram right here summarizes what happens when genes are unlinked, meaning they sit on separate chromosomes. So I have a little note here, and you can see this was the first parent. This is that homozygous recessive parent, and we get equal ratios of each type. So we say genes are not linked. They uh, follow independent assortment. But if genes are linked, you can see genes for the body color and the, the wing color, they're sitting on the same chromosome. And therefore, we're going to get higher numbers of parental type and lower numbers for recombinants. So the rule is going to be this. If your recombination frequency percent is actually lower than 50, then we're going to say the genes are linked. In other words, they sit on the same chromosome. But what if sometimes you have a number that's very close to 50? Well, this is where we can actually go on and carry out chi-square analysis to test and see if the difference we see um, is statistically significant. So we would test our hypothesis. Um, null hypothesis would state that these genes follow independent assortment. And then we carry out the analysis and see what we get. So that would be even a more accurate conclusion. So let's take a look how we would work this out. So this is your chi-square formula. You're going to need that, and you're going to also need a chi-square table, which is always provided to you. So now remember, we are crossing heterozygous organism, which was a fruit fly, heterozygous for both traits, and we're doing a test cross, so we're crossing with homozygous recessive. So these are the offspring that we got, and these are the observed numbers of offspring of each type. So now we need to figure out the expected values. We cannot use percentages. Remember, for chi-square, we must always use the actual counts. So observed values, we already have them. We're going to need them right here for this formula. But expected values, remember what I said before. If you cross these two and genes assort independently, we would expect a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. So that means equal proportions of each type. So if we have a total... 400 offspring, we are going to get 100 here, 100 here, 100 here, and 100 here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug these values into my formula and work out my chi-square. All right, and my, my chi-square, calculated chi-square, is going to be 66.5. So now we're going to choose p-value of 0 0.05 and three degrees of freedom because we have four categories so four minus one that gives you three so we're looking at critical value of 7.81 which is this number right here and now we have to compare chi-square with critical value and notice that number is much larger so therefore we are going to reject the null hypothesis and we stated that genes assort independently, and the difference we see and expect would be uh, statistically insignificant. But in this case, we are actually rejecting the null hypothesis. We're saying that, no, no, genes do not assort independently. They are sitting on the same chromosome. They are linked and therefore tend to be inherited together. And this is why we see much lower numbers of recombinants. So that's how we apply chi-square analysis to test whether or not your genes assort independently.